You're listening to the Diablo Podcast. This is the host, Flux, and we are online at DiabloPodcast.com. I am speaking today with Eliminator. Blazer. And Wolfpack. Hello. Okay, we are, we are talking about all the recent changes. We're just going to run right down Jay Wilson's big, um, what was it, an email, a, a post, a news article, whatever you want to call it. Blog before. entry. Yeah, pretty close to a blog entry. <laughs> and we're just going to run down that in order and have a few comments on each thing. And obviously, a lot of people are just pissed that it's it, there's no release date yet, and it sounds like they're going to be delaying it again because they're still making big changes. And other people are pissed that the, they're just sort of iterating and kind of going in circles, and nothing is changing. Yeah. Really, uh, what do you guys What do you guys think? You, you go ahead, Wolfpack. I mean, there's there's a couple areas where it seems like they're just so yeah, the, one of the very first things we heard about Diablo is we're removing the scroll of stuff Town Portal. Town Portal is not in the game. We're not using Town Portal. It's now a recall stone, and now. Now it's a town portal, you know, and uh, and you well, know, originally like... it was completely. Well, no, there's no town portal. That we're not going to ever put town portal in because it's completely broken, and there's no reason why we should f- try to fix it. <clears throat> yeah. And then everybody on the forums were like, "Well, you could fix it pretty easily. <laughs> so yeah. why are you why are you saying that you can't or you won't?" And then lo and behold, what happens? What is it? Uh, Look at my clock here. Uh, six years later, and decide, oh well, Town Portal is good, and uh, we're gonna put it back in. Yeah, and and the, I mean, the it was like what late 2010 when they released the huge stats overhaul, and they're like, yeah, we're all about attack and precision and defense. Sounded and, uh, nice on paper. It, those are now gone, and it's back to strength decks. Um, in, which it actually a change I like, but I mean, it seems like they're at the point where it's not, they're not, I don't know. I mean, the majority, there are a couple of the changes I like, but they don't seem like, I don't look at these changes and I say, wow, Diablo is going to be an epic game now, <laughs> you know, like it's just, okay, this is really cool. Um, it could easily have been done. Well, I, aside from the stats changes, I can see where, Balancing stats is tricky, but the rest of them, I'm like, I, I could see that being done in a patch and not really impacting my play style at all. Like in the beta, I know I, I'm in town more often than my inventory is filling up anyway for quests. So having, uh, it's not forcing me into town any more often than it would be if we did have the Nephilim Cube and Cauldron of Jordan. So I mean, the vast majority of these changes are just like not are just trivial. I mean, it's not something... I, I just really hope they're not holding the game back because scrolls of identification are under, like, development, you know? <laughs> scrolls, they need help! I don't know. <laughs> yeah. People kept saying during the whole Korean authorization, you know, our real money auction house argument thing, this is what's holding up the game, etc. And Blizzard kept saying, no, no, we have lots of other reasons to delay it besides this. Yeah. And I, I guess they're proving that correct now, but <laughs> but there was a lot of de- we as we remember um, StarCraft Two was almost ready, and they kept saying it's going to be ready very soon. And then they basically they had a six month delay because BattleNet wasn't ready to roll yet, the new BattleNet version 2.0 stuff. Yeah. And they were rushing and saying they can get Diablo Three ready for 2011, which is you know of last month. And then they decided, you know, what was it in November or so? They said no, we can't make this after all. And there's been a lot of speculation that they were having issues with Battle.net as well for Diablo 3. And so they just said, well, look, Battle.net, Battle.net can't be ready for a few months yet. So maybe just because they knew they had these delays, they went back and took a look at more basic core game systems. And that's kind of what we're seeing in this current, all these changes. Mm-hmm. Like they wouldn't really have delayed the game to do this, but since it was delayed for other reasons, they said, what the hell? I mean, it could be, but I think there, there are all, also more other pressing issues, I should say that uh, they have to address the, the reason why they've also delayed the game. And, of course, the two biggest changes are stay, we, we still know what the runestone system is, and then Jay also said they're doing big overhauls to the skill system. Yeah, that, that's the, the two things I was thinking about. Them, them, the reason why it was pushed back to Q1 was, was both skills, runes, and auction house, how that system is working. 
And they, Bashiach in a recent forum post said Auction House, we're pretty happy with it. This is how it's going to be. And we're going to add a little more functionality to the search engine maybe. And everybody, you know, we talked about this the last couple of podcasts, and you guys all thought the Auction House was kind of useless as it is. And they're like, hey, good enough to launch. But yeah. obviously other things they don't think are good enough to launch. <laughs> yeah, that's strange. So we're going to go right to Jay's post now and just run down some of the stuff. And you said you had a lot of t- comments on the first topic, Wolfpack, which is the removal of the identification scrolls. Yeah, I was being totally sarcastic. Um, I, that's, that's not allowed here. I, I can't. <laughs> you come I, up I, with something. I mean, Deckard Kane was my ID guy in Diablo 2. I never carried scrolls. I never picked up scrolls. It's, yeah, I'm not attached to them in any way. I don't think they add anything to the game. I'm perfectly acceptable with right-clicking on id items manually and just having to be ID'd. I, I don't understand why Decker T- Kane doesn't identify them now anyway. Yeah, no, that completely... Do you, do you forget? I mean, he's <laughs> old. Yeah. It's oh. been 20 years, and he's lost the knack. Yeah. At Alzheimer's, man, it takes a, takes a number out of your memory. He's trying to teach Leah. Maybe it'd be funny if Leah could do it, but like she got every fifth item wrong. <laughs> and you start using it, it was something else. You should yeah. be like, oh, sorry. Or she has a chance to curse the item just by identifying <laughs> yeah. it correctly. She has, yeah, or she'll ruin, she'll break it and yeah. destroy it. It's like when you you can go to like a barber hair, hair, like academy and get your hair cut by a trainee. And for it's really cheap, but they might give you like a mohawk by accident. So. <laughs> yeah. So the other comment I had on that is maybe they don't want Kane to do it because he's going to die and or turn into Diablo early in the game, and therefore he couldn't do it in Act 1 and then vanish. That's a good point. Maybe, maybe there's some plot development with well, Kane not going I, to be available. I mean, they've really hinted towards Kane dying in the in the course of the game with the the Black Soulstone video and and just the way they talk and the Book of Kane and stuff like that. They're really hinting towards it's going to happen sooner or later. You know what I say to that? What? About damn time. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, I was quoting the StarCraft guy there. All right. And, uh, it didn't work very well. Okay. <laughs> we should at least mention that they, they're removing the ID scrolls, and instead of using an ID scroll now, you just get it automatically, but there's like a two-second delay. Should What do you guys think? Should they play a drum roll during that sound effect? Yes. I think that'll be kind of fun, actually, getting to wait for it. Of course, on the other hand, if it's your 73rd green breastplate, you know, you're like, oh, god damn it, why do I have to wait for this? I already know what it is. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they could just also, if they really want to have emphasis on the whole uh, slot machine type thing, they just have all the numbers scrolling and rolling as yeah. you're sitting there <laughs> having <laughs> your having your uh, mouse button over it. Says the man who works in Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, next point. Fifth belt slot is now dedicated to health potions instead of having the option of putting health potions or skills into it. Does this make any difference in your gameplay? Nope. Un- tons of difference. I don't I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> Actually, no. <laughs> in the beta, when you start off, that's where potions are anyway. But you can always map them to somewhere else if you like. But, of course, you don't really need potions too often in the beta. And there's still six... You know, we get six skills, and you have the one, two, three, four, and then your left and right mouse button. So you do have six keys. The only potential problem I can see is if someone's doing like a weird build, like a melee witch doctor or something, and you actually need to have regular attack on on one of your like on your left click, it could be a problem. But that seems like it'll be a pretty rare instance. Yeah, I don't see many people having a use for the basic attack at all. Okay, next topic: Mystic gone bye bye. Will you care? Eliminator. Crickets. Crickets. Uh, not really. I mean, we never really got to experience anything that she she did. So um, I think as long as they hold it off and put it in an expansion, I think it'd be fine. Uh, you just move around some some of the key. I don't think she really did anything but enchant, right? She didn't take out. She didn't make rune stones, did she? Or was that the jeweler? I don't remember. Yeah, she lost most of her talents. She had really clever gossips, though. Oh, right. She was the one with the great voice acting. I doubt that, actually. <laughs> I'm just joking, but who knows? Maybe she was. <laughs> the enchant system seems like the bigger removal. I mean, they they said that's going to be a really important thing, and you can customize all your items and stuff with it. But from what they said in the, you know, what Jay said in his post, they basically just turned into a way to modify your stats. 
So it was kind of redundant with what gyms do as it is. Yeah, I mean, it is a loss in customization, but it's not that disappointing because um, they're talking about bringing her in later. Like my personal um, pet peeve is that now I'm going to have to hold on to those books of training. Like I can't throw them away after I level up my blacksmith all the way and I get my jeweler up all the way. Um, You're going to say you have an entire box of your yeah i'm gonna have to stash full of piled up books of training i have to have like five spaces wasted by the but no i mean i if it it makes sense if it's not ready to go it's not ready to go and at this point i just want to play the freaking game so if if removing the mystic makes it happen faster and then they add her later like that's the kind of thing i would support i certainly hope that they add in different types of enchants besides you know just plus the strength plus the decks that they do some cool stuff with her yeah. And now they have time to work on that. The irony is that I've been thinking recently, I've, I wrote on a news post a couple of weeks ago, they should re- they might as well remove the jeweler because all he does now is is socket and unsocket and upgrade gems. And they could easily put in some other mechanism to upgrade gems. And the, the blacksmith actually used to do the socketing initially. And the jeweler just removed things from sockets. So they've they've trimmed back the options. Of course, then the jeweler stays in and the mystic goes away. So maybe but, they'll add more of what the Mystic had to the Jeweler now. The initial, they they actually added him. The initial artisans, artisans, God damn it, were <laughs> the initial update. The Mystic had did the crafting recipes for magical like wands and staves and and daggers and stuff like that, spellcasting items. And the Jeweler did crafting recipes for rings and amulets. And now there are no crafting recipes for rings and am- or amulets, I guess until the expansion probably. And now the the smith does all of the weapon and every kind of crafting entirely. So they've really put, kind of given him more features and taken away from the others, which made them expendable, I guess. I do wonder if some voice actor somewhere read this news and screamed out in agony for her six months of you know recording stupid dialogue for the barbarian or whatever, and now it's all gone from the mystic. I doubt it. She got paid. She don't care. She did 500 versions of, you know, welcome back to town, where is the rock you were supposed to bring me, you know? And now it's all gone. Yeah. Well, so, I imagine yeah. they'll still need her. If they'll just plug that all that stuff in for when they do put her in, because you, maybe you'll start off when you start off a brand new game in, uh, in the expansion, and she'll be there. They'll need her from the beginning. Yeah, I think they'll just fully reintegrate her, assuming they can make the enchants do something useful. It's funny they didn't just leave her in there just to be someone to talk to, but I guess they didn't want to have it kind of a useless, just a chat person. Yeah, it's curious to me, too, how they're going to differentiate between enchantments and charms, unless you can enchant charms. Or or in charm chance. Or in charm (laughs) chance, yeah. Okay, next topic. Stone of Recall went bye bye Now it's a town portal button on your interface. Does anybody care? No. You... After if you don't do anything for five seconds, you vanish, and in town you leave a portal, but there's no portal left in the dungeon. So, I mean, there's no change at all to the function of it. People are thinking, I saw some posts, people are like, oh, wow, it's going to be a portal again. It's like, no, it's exactly the same. They just moved it, moved it and changed the icon. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine they actually made it the exact same way it was in D2. <laughs> How many people yeah, would be that... slapping their foreheads? <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of the, this goes back to kind of our first topic, but you know, it seems like maybe the Diablo 3 team felt the pressure to kind of reinvent the wheel in a lot of ways. You know, we're going to change attributes, we're going to change all these things, and we're, we don't need town portals, and we don't need health potions, and we don't need life leech. And now, of course, we've got health potions, and we've got life leech. I mean, they're a little bit different, but it yeah. seems like, you know, maybe the Diablo 2 guys, you know, kind of knew what they were doing after all. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, just a little bit. They don't really have anything to draw on. Like, there's no... Diablo is its own genre. There's... A, I don't, I've never played a game that comes close to having the same feel as Diablo, so I really feel like they're sort of stuck being the innovators, which, again, puts a lot of pressure on them. Because then everyone's going to come out, whatever they end up doing in Diablo 3, and they're going to try to copy it over the next 10 years. So, yeah, that's just my two cents on it. I think, for me, Titan Quest came the closest. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally agree with you. But even that was... It was so much of a copy in a lot of ways. And they even took the the town portal on the hot bar from Titan Quest, too, because that's what it, what it was. We had this whole debate after I went and played Torchlight 2, and we had that information about it. And they have a lot of features in Torchlight 2 that are much more like Diablo 2. 
than what it's than what is in Diablo three or what was in Diablo three. And at the time, we, we were kind of talking like, oh, Torchlight 2, it's kind of primitive. They didn't really re-examine the basic elements of the game so much. And then, you know, as, as Diablo 3 steadily goes back to what Diablo 2 was, it's like, you know, well, maybe they weren't so bad off having attributes as they were and such. Yeah. Okay, the next removed feature, the Nephilim Cube, or Nephalim, or Nephalim, or who knows how to pronounce it? Nobody. It's gone, and you can no longer salvage in the field. You must go back to town and use the blacksmith. Either of you guys think this is a horrible change or a good change? I don't like the change because my OCD wanted me to pick up everything. <laughs> yeah, and no more craft, no more salvaging white items either, magical or or, or broken, cracked items. Yes, so. as I as I sent uh, Bashiak a, a message on Twitter. So what happens when garbage explodes from demons? Because loot is a term for something worth of value. And he said, we had junk in Diablo 2, mostly in the form of arrows and bolts, and so now we're just recreating that. <laughs> yes, I guess so. I, that's what he said. I'm not, I don't know if it's a good idea, but... <laughs> it does seem weird that there's... But see, in Diablo 2, I mean, obviously you're, you didn't need arrows and bolts unless you were using arrow crossbows or bows, but yeah. you know, at least there, white items were mostly garbage, but you could get you know, you needed stuff for sockets and you needed stuff to make runestones and such with. So even though they were kind of useless, at least some of them are good. And of course, you, you could get wands or scepters or something that had really high sale values if they had good plus spells on them. Yeah. So it's weird to have this much stuff dropping and they're they're manifestly, steadfastly committed to this being garbage and not even worth picking up to sell. You know, people are like, what if you want to sell everything and be OCD, like certain podcast guests? And they're like, that will not be possible disallowed yeah we will make we will. it so we will make it so useless and valueless that no one will do this just like we made the companions so useless and powerless that they can't be used in final game oh wait oh wait yeah <laughs> <laughs> i i think there's a couple of points here like it, they're they're going to control whether or not you can salvage white items is kind of irrelevant because blizzard is going to control the rate at which you can craft so if they want you in a typical run to be able to craft five five items from what you get on that run then they'll just take the expected white value and take the plain reagent and multiply that times you know it's a it's a formula and so it i don't think it's that big of a deal um i i hope this means that they're increasing drop rates pretty substantially so the so we get to see more loot because um especially in multiplayer i felt like i could do several runs on the skeleton king and not have a full inventory which is not as you know, it's not that fun of an experience of having loot to manage at all is is part of the fun of Diablo for me. So I don't have a problem with white items not being able to be salvaged. And as far as the blacksmith taking over for the Nephilim cube, I, I uh, yeah, don't care at all because you have to go to the blacksmith anyway to repair. So you might as well salvage your stuff while you're there. Yeah, I found myself in the habit in the beta of going to him and then basically doing all my cube salvaging while I'm at the blacksmith anyway. So it's like I wouldn't even notice the difference. Yeah. He's the closest one to the waypoint in Act 1, at least, so it's like an easy stop. Yeah. And you need, Christian, you, Chris, we're doing that stupid find the the quest about five times, finding the crown. So you have to go to him to get the crown hammered back into shape anyway. He is a definitely but, an important figure in Act 1. Interesting things about the crafting you just mentioned is um, it's it's hard to judge how crafting costs and values are going to work in the final game because in the beta you essentially never find any rare items. Very, very, very seldom do you ever find a rare. And as a result, you don't have a whole lot of rare materials You know, because when you salvage a rare, you almost always get a rare from it and sometimes get a legendary. And whereas if you salvage blues, you have a very small percent chance, supposedly 5% chance to get a yellow. So it seems like you have pretty much unlimited amounts of crafting for blue recipes, and very, very seldom do you have yellow ones. Even though in the beta, most of the rare stuff is too high level anyway. But has that been you guys' experience, and do you think that they are... Is that a feature or a bug? Is this just a, a weird thing in the beta where we don't find any rare items yet, and you'll, get, you'll find more of those later on, so you'll have plenty of rare materials? I'm guessing it has to be a feature. And is it a feature only in the beta, or do you think the whole game will be like this? I think it's just in the beta that that uh, they want to slow us, slowly introduce us to the different types of magical items, like they said they were going to do with the whites and the and the magics. Yeah, I agree with that. I think that as we go on, rares will be more, a little bit more common. But also, 
um, to your point about not having a lot of rares, uh, I have... I have had good luck getting rares from salvaging blue items. So my, my sorceress or wizard that's about to be wiped <laughs> has like 20 something of the things just because I hardly ever craft the rare items. Because really the only thing in the beta you can even craft that's rare is you can do what? The belt and there's a crossbow and there's the wizard offhand thing, the book. Yeah, which doesn't even come. It, you, that book used to be really good when it came guaranteed with wizard damage on it. But now that offhands give plus damage, it's. It's kind of worthless. I, they're going to have to take another look at that for sure. Well, they might add it back considering the fact that the, with Jay Wilson's report, he did mention something about different type of uh, class-specific pluses to skill. Yeah. yeah, I think we're going to see some big itemization changes. I think we're still kind of in the very normal, wimpy level of items. Yeah. And there's going to be they're making big changes as they're, as they're doing all of the stuff to attributes and everything else. Yeah, I mean you they kind of have to make uh, if, even in the low level crafting, I we're going to have to see a, either a massive influx of recipes or um some classes are just going to have really bad low level crafting ability. The other thing with crafting ability is you as soon as you can craft any any item space in the beta, it's better than anything, anything you will ever find in the low level. I mean, I never found a blue or a rare, maybe a rare, but never found a blue that can even hold a candle to the to the best to any of the blue crafting recipes. I mean, it seems like as soon as you've gone through the Skeleton King once and you've upgraded your gear, you will never find anything that's not just materials. I mean, you might as well just be you just might as well just find, you know. <laughs> And materials instead of finding items, because all you ever do is break them down to, to craft with them. Yeah, well, I'm pretty sure that's because the affixes you get from crafting are based on your character level. Um, and you'll notice that like the really, really good stuff has a higher level requirement than you are when you make the first run through on um, the Skeleton King. So I, I think that's okay. I don't think that is something that's going to continue throughout the game as we progress through it naturally. Or maybe they're just maybe blues are never really going to be viable, and you're going to you know rares will be viable maybe in sets and uniques, but yeah, the blue stuff, stuff the blue stuff that gets dropped is never going to be good as the blue stuff you can craft. Maybe that's just how they're designing it. Yeah, it it could be. Which seems weird because artisans are account wide and gold is account wide, and you can easily leave you know you can obviously just twink items or just leave materials in the stash. So anytime you want to make a new character, you can you know spend five seconds at the blacksmith and you've got good enough equipment to go through level 15, you know, right from the yeah. start. Oh, you know, going back to your previous point though, a, a couple notable exceptions. Um, my w- wizard's offhand, the best I was able to get was dropped in the beta, um, and helm, chest, and belt, the best I was able to get of all of those was not crafted for for maxing damage. The weird thing about it, if you look at uh, the um, the crafting recipes, if you look on like Diablo Nut, where we have all the recipes in the game listed, there's tons of, of journeymen and apprentice ones that you never see in the beta. I mean, they're in the game code, and I'm, I'm not sure if they're supposed to be dropping the plans and they just don't drop, or if they're just not you know implemented yet, or if that's older information you know from the old last patch. But there's many, many more recipes of the same level, you know, of comparable level that we're just never seeing. And there's no telling why that is. So I think we're going to see a lot different crafting recipes in the final game than we're getting now, too. So we're kind of speculating on incomplete information, which yeah. is yeah. pretty much all we ever do around here. <laughs> That's our jobs. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. Okay, and probably the biggest change, the most multi-part change that Jay announced, are the reworked attributes. We've been mentioning this already, but strength stays in the game, but defense, attack, and precision are out. And we're getting back dexterity, intellect, and vitality with slightly different attributes and functions. And you guys have kind of mentioned this already, but are there any of those that really jumped out at you as, as good or bad changes, or what do you think? Well, I, I made a post on the forums about this because I think it's great. Um, like, as I was making different characters in the beta and messing around, I realized when I wanted to max damage, I just took the best gear I'd made for my sorcerers and took 90% of it dropped it on my barbarian and suddenly he was doing huge amounts of damage and and that really breaks um i don't know i I like feeling that different classes are different and i like i like feeling that 
a great item for a wizard is not necessarily going to be a great item for the barbarian or for the monk. And I feel it helps give you that sense of, oh, I've identified this really, really awesome item, but clearly it should be used for a barbarian because, I mean, one of the things I did all the time in Diablo 2 is I'd find something amazing and, it'd be, and I'd think, oh, I could totally design a character around this weapon or around this armor, or, you know, because of something it did. And so now I can see myself, you know, messing around in Inferno with my first character and finding this incredible drop with tons of dexterity. And then I think, okay, I get to, I'm going to go make a Demon Hunter now. It makes me excited to make a Demon Hunter. And I, I really like that. I mean, obviously there were class-specific items, but I don't think that was enough. And I like that the stats now encourage you to think critically about the items that drop and decide, you know, am I going to trade them? Am I going to use them? Um, and so, yeah, I, I like the change. I think it, it really breaks it up a little more between the, the classes and you can get really the, the gear you'll have for wizards and witch doctors will be different. Like, you know, like, uh, Wolfpack was saying, it was going to be different from the monk and the demon hunter. So, I mean, it, it will bring a little variety to all the drops and every time you look at an item, you'll be like, well, maybe this would be good for someone else. Or instead of everybody, all the items that dropped, everybody was like, Oh, I could use this. It's a, it's more damage, you know, it's more damage for any class that I want to put it on. And you wonder how they'll have to change the items. I mean, like for instance, the crafting recipes. Now the first shoulders you can make are like plus 22 to 26 attack. And that's like that's immediately like doubles the damage of every character who gets it in the bid in the beta as it is. So what is that going to change to? I mean, are they going to change those to add to dexterity or strength or I mean, you know, obviously if it's dexterity, then monks and demon hunters will think it's an awesome item. Yeah. And barbarians won't have any interest in it. But if it's strength, then you know, vice versa. And same with the other Dutch modifiers. Well, they have to make more. Are there going to be like three different versions of those shoulders now? So every class has something worth making. Yeah, you would think so. I, I, I'm positive they'll expand drastically on the recipes available, especially to low-levels characters. So, 2012, then. Yep, 20... Possibly 2013. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> he said 2012. He said 2012. We all agreed, yes. I, I still think that's next year. I can't write... The, I, I'm always... It takes me until about March to write the correct date <laughs> on the check, so... What I think is interesting is, I wonder, with the wizards, when you go up and attack something in melee... Do you need strength to do plus damage, or will it be also be based off their intelligence to give you plus damage in melee? You'd think an intelligent wizard wouldn't be in melee combat, actually, but obviously that's not the right kind of intelligence. But what so about the battle that's mage? That's intellect. It's that, actually it's kind of weird because the um, spectral blade is like a really damaging, effective spell for the wizard. I mean, you can almost kill the Skeleton King as fast with that as anything else just because you never run out of mana doing it. What the hell do they call it? Arcane power. Yeah, close enough. And that's a melee range attack primarily. I guess one of the runestones can make it longer, but it's weird how these different spells and different attributes are going to work out now. We're going to have to see. It seems like there'll be many, many major changes. Like Jay's email or blog post, as you guys termed it, you know, just kind of skims over stuff and doesn't really go into that many details. And as we're, you know, as you guys are mentioning, that'll, you know, that this means they've got to triple the triple the number of crafting recipes. It's like, well, that's kind of a big difference, or maybe not. What I think uh, is funny about these changes is the fact that a majority of them really don't seem like it probably took them a lot of work to do. <laughs> like, oh, let's just move this to here. Oh, let's just not have this here. It, it didn't seem like it would it would take them long to to do those things except for the the stat changes and the itemization it's probably been done for uh, several months already and now they're, they're still working on the skills and the skill runes Good yeah luck they've, with that. they've play tested they've play tested all this stuff for a while and they've they feel that this is the way they want to have it and that's why they just decided hey look this is the way it's going to be and here's a little rundown of what we've done why do you suppose they waited until just this week to tell us instead of telling us this in, in December or November or whatever? Are they just they wanted to wait until it was ready to go into the game? I guess so. Maybe they wanted to wait until it was ready to be played so they can immediately give it to us to see how we react to it inside the game. 
they had their Christmas break, so maybe they took them a week to get the beta patch all in. Yeah. Or is just something to tide us over until the release date announcement coming up next week? <laughs> I doubt it. Next week. The next um, Activision co- Blizzard conference call is, I think, February 7th or 9th or something like that. 9th. Pe- people are already sending me emails saying, maybe there's going to be a release date announcement. I'm like, yeah, keep telling yourself that. Well, let's face it. If they don't have an announcement before then and they don't say anything about it during the conference, you know for certain that it's not coming out in Q1. Yeah. You guys saw those Charlie Brown like Christmas and Thanksgiving specials when you were kids, right? Where Lucy would hold the football and Charlie Brown would run up and he, she'd always yank it away. I love those ones. I, I, if I had any video editing capabilities, I keep wanting to ma- get that clip and edit it in so it's Blizzard holding the football and the fans are Charlie Brown running up to it. And, of course, the football is the release date. And no matter how many times it happens, we always talk ourselves into it. Oh, boy, maybe I'll get to kick the football this time. And then, then what happens? Yank. Yeah. yeah, so somebody who can edit videos, do that really quick and send it to me so I can post it and pretend like I did it myself. Okay, thanks. <laughs> One other change with the attributes it is the now and the removal of the cube and the stone and the other thing is that the attributes are now shown right in your paper doll next to your, you know, right in the inventory window next to your paper doll, like these big list of numbers there. Uh, what do you guys think about that display? I thought it looked a little overcrowded personally, but... Uh, well, I know some people are going to be happy that the the face is going to be gone from the next to the paper <laughs> doll. It's such a trivial thing to be upset about, but people <laughs> did get upset about it. Uh, Maybe I, it's still there. You just can't see it. True. It's it's it is, probably is still there. It's just <laughs> underneath it. It's below the numbers. You could probably just you could also probably just X off the numbers maybe and and minimize that part and you'll see it again. Okay, so the attributes are showing in the window, and one of the things people have noticed is I never notice my attributes in the beta now. I mean, you see them all the time when you open up your character window, but I just look at the big number at the bottom for my attack, damn, you know, and my, my defense maybe. And even though the, the even though the attribute numbers are large, they're not really noticeable. Do you think that this is part of Blizzard's effort to make us actually notice our attributes now by putting them right next to your equipment so you can't help but see them? I, I just think it's a convenience. Um... Because you, I mean, I don't know about you, every single time I put on a new piece of gear, I have my character window open and I have my inventory window open so that I can compare the difference. And it's just, especially for people who don't have massive resolutions, that's just a ton of screen space lost for no reason. Because yeah, you're it just, it's it's inefficient. And I, I, I like the way they did it. I'm not sure what this means for the character screen, though, if it's just gone and there's just the inventory screen. I think it is gone because if you look down on the UI, it doesn't have both the inventory little bag and the and the the character page. It's just one icon of the character now. Is that where the town portal button went? Yeah, I, I kind of. I also don't like how the town portal and all those little buttons now are are square. They're, I mean, yeah, they are square now. I should say. They, I like the, the way they are now in the beta, how they're kind of rounded. But that, that's just like a little personal preference. Yeah, Blizzard could spend two weeks working on that feature, you realize. They will, and they yeah, will too. They, they probably like, have, actually. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> we need to figure out a better UI scheme. These square buttons aren't working. Yeah, redesign stat. Let's try hexagons. Well, like Bashiak said in some forum posts, people are complaining, why are you guys making all these changes and then unchanging the changes? And he said, well, we've got to go fully into these things. You can't, like, halfway try out, you know, square buttons. You've got to make all the buttons completely square and try it for a while. And if you don't like it, you go back to ovals, you know? And that's kind of the same – that's just how they That's how they roll. He says that armor is now doing what defense used to do, which is flat damage reduction, and that physical resist is taking over for armor. Um I, that doesn't make a ton of sense to me, and I was looking at some of the screenshots in the character display. You can still see that the actual physical pieces of armor that you're equipping still give you an armor stat. So, so either he misspoke, or every piece of armor is now going to give physical resist. I'm not sure which it is, um, but I will find out when beta gets patched tomorrow. Yeah, it's tr- it's kind of tricky, the nomenclature, because we've got armor, and you've got defense, and you've got physical resistance, and those are all very different things, even though people probably will use them as synonyms. Well, it sounds like defense is gone. 
I don't know. I don't have the full list in front of me. I thought they'd change something in the defense because armor is what you get from putting points into strength now, along with barbarian damage. Sort of unclear to me how it could work the way he said it would. So hopefully they change it in a more logical way than that. Any predictions for the skill rune system? How are unidentified, unattuned runes going to work? I don't know how. I, I'll tell you how I want it to work. I I hope that skill runes do not attune to a skill i just hope they they maintain their color and they maintain their level and then they when you do insert them they get a random bonus that's that's how i would like it to work the the random magical bonus and i also hope you can get rare skill runes and legendary and set skill runes because i think that would be cool but that's expansion that's just how i would like it to work yeah wouldn't that mean that everyone would just keep rolling level seven runes forever until you got one that had really good you know plus 20 strength or whatever yeah and uh, I, I think that would be a great additional way to customize your character since we've lost charms and we've lost enchants and it would also maintain the demand for level 7 skill runes substantially longer than if you just if they didn't attune at all and got no bonuses then as soon as you had 35 of each type you'd be done which, granted, is a daunting feat since they only drop an Inferno, but it, you know, it, eventually people would stop needing their skill runes. Of course, if they do attune to the skill, then you have you that, need thousands of each of them. Yeah, but that it seems like it's really annoying, though. Yeah, that, I, I would not like that because if I find a really good Indigo rune that gives Int, I want to be able to put that in any of my skills, depending on my build. But uh, that's that's just my hope. I think what the system that they originally talked about how each one would get locked in it would definitely prolong the item hunt at the end of the game comparatively to just being able to um, get the, the color and you could just switch it out to any skill I mean I'm kind of kind on the fence I don't know, really know how it, would, how it would feel until I, you actually get to play it I mean if they drop a whole lot more then maybe it would make up for the fact that you're not you're uh, you're not getting exactly what you want every time. But if they have it where you drop, they drop uh, less frequently, then I'd want it to be you know you could switch it out to any skill. Yeah, you know, with this change to the stats, um, they created two new secondary stats, Chance to Crit and Physical Resist. I don't see why they didn't just make the Enchanter do secondary stats and, um, you know, the gems do primary stats. But I have, I have One last thing. Have, you, have either of you guys been playing much beta in the last week or two and any, any new exciting things you've been trying out? I've been playing a lot of uh, Naked Runs as... Some people have seen on the forums. God, oh, I TMI, did. dude. Oh, you mean your character? <laughs> yes, my character. <laughs> wow, it's like I was envisioning webcams and, and subscription rates. So <laughs> how how are your naked runs going? Uh, a lot of fun, actually. It changes up the gameplay a lot. You uh, actually have to use potions, and you actually have to use some strategies. You can't just run into every situation. Uh, resources, you know, actually do run out, and you actually do have to manage them more because of the fact that you're only doing like three DPS. So you actually have to use your more powerful skills to be able to do more damage and actually take things out faster. So, I mean, it really does change the game completely because, because in the normal beta, when you just put on gear normally, your health goes up so fast, you almost, you double your health pretty, pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, and more so, than double. <laughs> yeah, more than double. Like, you can easily get, like, a barb at ninth level has 160, 180 hit points, and with gear you can easily, without trying too hard, have 400 hit points plus. Oh and, yeah. And that makes a huge difference when things are hitting you, and you're not, you're not even taking a fraction of that off you're maybe taking 20 or 30 off which makes a difference when you only have 180 and you get hit for 30 points but it doesn't make a difference when you have 400 or 450 you know around there so you really do have to encounter certain creatures like the abominations especially for the barbarian you're really 
actually all the classes, it's, it's more hit and run. You come in, you hit him a few times, and you try to run away, and you're going to use a health potion, and then you're going to try to run around and wait until your health potion gets close to to being uh, ready to be used again. Then you run back in, hit him a couple times, and rinse and repeat. Um, there's also things that show up like all the the sub quest bosses they don't drop health globes during key intervals like the skeleton king and like the rare and champion mobs so when you fight those characters those bosses um you have to be even more careful about how you approach them because of the fact that you know that you're not going to get a health globe during the combat so they're like harder than the skeleton king in that way. Yeah, they're, and you know what? And what's kind of funny about the skeleton king is that when you do it without gear and without weapons, you you actually understand the strategy that you'll have to use later on in higher difficulties with him. You understand that you have to let him summon up his skeleton minions, and then you have to get him be- get him behind them when he goes to do his triple swinging attack, because he kills all of the skeletons for you, and that drops, like, the health globes that you can use to pick up and um, heal yourself. And you can really see it when you're doing it without all the extra extra stuff. I just think it's a, it's a lot more interesting, and I definitely think if the game turns out to be as easy as it is for normal that I'm going to be playing most of normal without any gear on and adding gear as I go if I need it. Because the most, the most challenging thing for me in any of those gearless runs was the trap chest for the Barbarian. I came into the, the room with the trap chest where it sinks into the ground and the, the four uh, gatekeepers, they're called, pop up and they spawn archers... Uh, shield bearers and skeletons and lots and lots of skeletons lots the, of, the, so, ar- the archers yeah, are the tough ones yeah cuz what happens is if you don't destroy one of those uh, spawners fast enough and you get killed that entire room is packed with skeletons and you try to fight your way into the room and it is a real war i mean i spent must have been like eight minutes trying to get back into the room and I couldn't do it because I couldn't do enough damage to kill enough of them to get in there and then when I did even if I did kind of get into the doorway I got hosed by the archers (laughs) that took off so much of my health so quickly that I had to retreat so it, it really gave me a sense of how different the game could be Leap attack couldn't get it done for you? I guess you would have gotten trapped in the middle of them all. (laughs) What I ended up having to do was the strategy was I took leap attack, I took... um, Ground uh, stomp? Ground stomp, yeah, and I took Hammer of the Ancients. And I leaped in there, ground stomped to to stun the ones that were around me, and then I hammered the the Ancients as many times as I could on the, the gatekeeper to destroy it. And I had to do that, like, I died, I think, two, two times for the first one. And then the, sure. sec- the second one was a little easier to, to take out because I didn't have the, the other group of skeletons. And then <laughs> the funny part was the third one, when I jumped in to get the third one, in the other room adjacent to this, there was a rare spawn, a rare... Uh, teleporting bat that teleported in with his buddies. <laughs> and, I, and I was like, oh, great. <laughs> I had to deal with them too, and that slowed my progression down a little bit. Did you Does try to revenge? You... Revenge? I didn't have it at the time because I was only level seven or eight. Oh, okay. Yeah, revenge is twelve, I think. Yeah, it's a really later skill. I mean, it, it would make a huge difference in in how that would have went. So I, I just feel that I had a that was the most enjoyment I had in the game, and it was. A lot of it was me dying, which is kind of funny. Does it make you wish that, like Torchlight 2, you could choose difficulty levels to start with? Yes, it, it kind of does make me wish I could. But but just seeing how easy it was to just not put the gear on and make make it as challenging makes me say, well, I don't have to really worry about it too much. 
Yeah, I mean, not wearing gear versus manually increasing all the monsters' health is, you know, it's, it's, it's either way you're manually handicapping yourself. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so in Torchlight Two, do they are they going to have like the standard difficulty levels too on top of the difficulty setting, or is it just the setting? Both. They are they're, have they're calling it they're calling it like plus one or something when you replay it all like it you know it basically it scales everything up to like level fifty. Oh, I see. Okay. And then you can also make them the difficulty level makes them attack faster and do more damage and like they, they the AI spawns more monsters more quickly that kind of thing. It's not cool. just you know it's not just more hit points or whatever. And that's cool. what Diablo three is going to be too because they mentioned that that the monsters yeah. aren't going to just stand around. <laughs> I think he just died. <laughs> I hope not. It's our first podcast fatality. Oh my god! Water went down the wrong pipe. Oh dear. <laughs> well, you were talking and drinking at the same time. Um, I I'll just fill in real quick with something I was testing in the beta. Um, I was curious if your weapon, if your DPS readout being higher necessarily meant you'd have higher spell damage. Um, so I found a bunch of items that were. They gave nothing but plus attack speed. Yeah. And then I tested with those slots empty, and then I tested with the attack speed equipped, and it doesn't make a difference for spell damage. It's entirely dependent on your your weapon damage and your um, and your attack, and obviously glass cannon. It, it has nothing to do with your attack speed. Although obviously, but, if you have higher you, attack speed, you will cast you get more attacks in the same amount of time. Yeah. Though. Yeah, you will yeah. cast faster. It just won't increase the damage you do per hit which matters for skills like meteor which takes two seconds to land or um diamond skin explosion which you know has a 15 second cooldown a thing i noticed what you guys just mentioned i played a new wizard and didn't really do anything with equipment all the way through and i had no problem killing stuff but i got to the skeleton king and i had like 137 hit points or something and he got one of those teleports and like two hits and i was dead i'm like wow actually i first time i'd ever died on the skeleton king in the whole beta and I just it was just because I had I had I had a weapon so I was casting fast but I had I hadn't done anything to add to my hit points and it was just and then I went you know I went and did some crafting and my hit points went up to like 450 so it was like it, it more than tripled my hit points just doing like three crafted items you know those pants are like plus 22 vitality or something like that yeah it it's so easy to get the the health to bring up your health hit points to like double or triple. One amusing thing I had this morning, I played a game with a barbarian, and it was very boring, of course, because barbarians are boring, and only dumb people like playing them. No. Sorry, but... Boo. 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 <laughs> well, no one, no one who plays barbarians can listen to a podcast. They can't figure out how to work a computer, so it's no problem. So Smash. Kind of, kind of a con- Smash. Yeah. The barbarian fans can't operate computers. That's going to be a problem there. Anyway, one thing that was amusing, I jumped over one of those barred gateways that you have to click to open, right? And I had a gold pet at the time, which was the locust, which flies around like low to the ground, and it got stuck on the gate behind me, which I was a little bit amused by, given that the bars are like, you know, six inches apart. Those <laughs> things, a, those and things it's a get locust. Stuck. Yeah, those things get <laughs> but, stuck on just about anything, though. <laughs> but it's flying, yeah. and it's it's a, it's a half an inch wide. Did you guys have any other last Diablo 3 thoughts here? Uh, one thing about the producer that just got, uh, said he left the company, I think that he probably got fired for for all this delays or perceived delays. Someone had to take the blame? Yep, someone had to take the fall, and it was that guy. Well, I mean, see, if you look at the description in the movies of a senior producer, they're supposed to be in charge of like budget and getting the thing out on time. And, well, if it translates to the same thing in games, then, well, a lot of people can say he didn't do his job. So wouldn't that mean the senior producer at Blizzard is like the drummer in Spinal Tap? <laughs> if you want to say like that, okay. I mean, like every work. six months they have to fire one, right? Or every every project is six months. There's a year, two. It's four years late. <laughs> he was the fourteenth senior producer on Diablo Three. <laughs> remember when remember when we used to kill the Al Qaeda number three guy like every two months? Yeah, it's always the number three guy. It's kind of the same thing, I guess. Some well, I think. Expendable. Well, also if you got to think that. We in, in uh, for Diablo 3's situation, they announced that it was going to be in 2011. Or they're going to try to in 2011, and then they're going to have to in this next 
uh, interview meet and this uh, investors meeting most likely have to say it's not going to make Q1 and they're going to have to say something like, well, we got rid of the person who was, who was holding it back or not, you know, not getting the project out on time. So. Okay, views expressed on the Diablo podcast are those of their of the guests and their <laughs> listeners, and not necessarily those of DiabloInkGamers.com. Thank you for listening. Right. <laughs> thanks, thanks for your time, guys. You've been listening to the Diablo podcast, and we are online at DiabloPodcast.com. Adios. Boo. See you later. Boo. 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 Bye.